Qua um, please. Welcome to Chicago. 네, 어, 이번 시카고가 처음인데 너무 아직 이제 도착하자마자 너무 바로 여기로 오게 돼서 어, 내일 제 일정이 없으니까 좀 아름다운 도시를 어, 돌아볼 예정입니다. Uh, this is my first time in Chicago and I'm really happy to be here and um, I'm excited to get to explore the city a little bit tomorrow. So I wanted to ask you, when you were thinking about this movie, and when you were in the concept stage, was there any disaster films that informed you or did you reference when you were thinking about this movie? So there are a lot of disaster movies and um, there were a lot of them that we drew upon when it came to a lot of technical scenes and a lot of um, production design. But the thing, the image that we drew on the most was Guernica by Picasso. 어, 그 그림을 <웃음> 했던 이유는 어, 정말 그 표현 자체는 어, 제가 개인적으로 봤을 때는 정말 모던한 그림이라고 생각을 하는데 그 안에 들어가 있는 정서 자체는 정말 그 끔찍한 정서를 어, 너무나도 잘 표현하고 있다는 생각이 들어서 어, 이 영화도 어, 저런 톤으로 만들어야겠다는. When we were looking at the image, the image itself seemed quite modern, but the people inside and the, the specifics and the details that were happening inside the, inside the image seemed very horrific, and we wanted to kind of reflect that in the film itself as well. Um, so I wanted also to ask uh, how much of the film was special effects and how much was it practical effects? Uh, 저, 보신 배경, 가장 주된 배경이 됐던 아파트를 어, 사실은 이제 원래는 진짜 공, 이렇게 실제 하는 공간에서 찍고 싶었는데 그게 좀 어려웠어요. 다들 뭐 사람이 살고 있거나 아니면 철거를 하는데 그 기간이 저희가 찍을 수 있는 기간이랑 맞지 않거나 그래서 어, 3층까지는 세트를 짓고 그 위는 CG로 다 연장을 한 거였고요. So when it came to the main apartment that the film takes place in, we wanted to be able to use a real set as much as possible, but there were a lot of difficulties when it came to that. So we were able to build the first three floors and use that as a real set and then be able to build um, VFX design on the rest of the floors. 그렇지만 이제 또 그게 또 CG T가 나거나 어 가짜 T가 나면 안 됐었기 때문에 그 실제로 철거하는 아파트 단지에 가서 어 현관문이라든가 창문, 뭐 난간, 어 나무도 가져오고 뭐 어려진 소품들 가져올 수 있는 건다 가져와서 어이 이 아파트가 진짜처럼 보이게 하기 위해서 애를 많이 썼던 것 같습니다. We actually tried to get as much of real apartment supplies as possible from abandoned apartments to be able to use such as screens, doors, windows, and things like that and be able to place them in the actual set. 그리고 어, 영화 설정 자체가 이제 빛이 어, 직광이 들어오는 설정이 아니었기 때문에 연기로 가득 찬 하늘을 표현했어야 했기 때문에 어, 저희는 근데 그래서 이제 천장에다가 그 아파트 세트장 3층짜리 세트장 위에 어, 천장 돔 형식으로 만들어서 어, 직광을 다 막고 찍었습니다. 
Also because the setting that we wanted to portray was very cloudy, very ashen, covered with smoke. So what we did was on top of, above the three-story set that we had built, we, we built a dome on top of it to be able to control that. 그래서 보신 영화의 모든 하늘이 거의 다 CG라고 보시면 될것 같습니다. So almost all of the sky that you see in the film is all special effects. 그리고 또 하나는 저희가 이제 되게 추운 설정으로 보이긴 하지만 배우들이 많이 나오다 보니까 일정을 맞추다 보니까 한 여름에 찍게 됐어요. 38도 막 거의 이럴 때 찍었는데 그래서 <웃음> 배우들이 정말 고생을 많이 했고 그 그래서 입김을 정말 리얼하게 넣어야 되는 게 중요했어서 입김 슈퍼바이저를 따로 어, 그, 고용을 해서 그 숨이 어느 대사 스스로 대사를 치면서 숨이 나가고 들어가는 타이밍에 맞춰서 어, 다 입김을 이렇게 입혔어요. Uh, so because there were so many characters and so many actors on set, it was really hard to be able to find a time for everyone. So we ended up shooting over the summer when it was like 90 degrees out. So we actually had someone who was in charge of uh, people's breath that you could see and to kind of be able to be in charge of timing it so that it would be in time with when all the actors would say their line. Um, and so given that, all that work that they did to kind of build the world of, of this post-apocalyptic world, um, and you had a, quite a large cast, how did you kind of convince not only the lead actors but the cast that they were living in this post-apocalyptic world? Did the, obviously the sets kind of help them out to kind of get in this mindset, but what else did you have to do to kind of get them in this mindset that they were living in this world? Um, as we mentioned, the biggest thing was the three-story set that we used, but on top of that, we had sketches of the full design and post-VFX designs that we continuously shared with the actors so they could also be able to um, be, in that, be in that mindset of that post-apocalyptic world. A lot of that had to do with set design and the props that were used in the three-story set as well. All right, so let's take it some questions from the audience, okay? So I, anybody has a question for the, yes, you all the way back there. You, yeah, just speak, just speak loud. <laughs> He says that he gets the, he gets this question a lot and always has the same answer and he would have died before any of this happened so he doesn't really have any other answer than that. 그래도 그래도 그나마 가장 비슷한 사람을 찾아보자면은 그 아이를 숨겨줬던 그 809호 사는 도균이 그나마 조금 비슷하지 않을까라는 생각을 해본 적이 있습니다. If he had to choose, it would have been the guy who lived in 509, Tokyo, who held the kids and the other people in the family as well. All right, uh, another question? And, uh, all right, I'll take a question from a volunteer then. <laughs>
네, 애초에 그 계획대로 되어 있었고 시나리오 상태에서부터 어, 그 장면은 음, 영탁이라는 캐릭터가 어, 어떤 선을 넘는 마지막 선을 넘는 순간이라고 생각했어요. 그러니까 그때까지도 어떻게 보면은 이 인물을 끝까지 어떻게든 지지해 보려고 하는 어, 순간들까지 갈수 있었을 텐데 그 선을 딱 넘어야 이 인물을 지지할 수 없는 인물로 만들 수 있지 않을까라는 생각이 들었고 그 뒤에 또그 사람이 내뱉는 대사도 암탉이 울면 집안이 망한다는 대사가 맞는 말이 아니라는 것을 어, 어, 증명하기 위해서는 그렇게 좀 강한 장, 정서적인 임팩트가 어, 필요하다고 생각했습니다. Yeah, so throwing your character off the cliff was always in the plan for us. Um, every everything that happens before then, we still try to root for him and be on his side. But him throwing her off the cliff is him crossing that line. It's the final straw where we can't really go back and, on this character. We can't really root for him anymore, um, and it kind of negates all of the, the 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 lines that he has and everything he says from there. Yeah, so I, actually, I want to follow up on his question there. Uh, so, how much did you did he stick to the script, or was there some improv in there, or did you just follow it all the way through? Oh, 거의 그냥 대본대로 찍은 것 같고 조금 바뀐 부분이 있다면 어 영탁 캐릭터가 <웃음> 기존에는 조금 더 뭐랄까 어, 일차원적인 그런 인물이었어요. 그래서 조금 더 빌런의 느낌이 더 많이 나는 인물이었는데 이병헌이라는 배우가 캐스팅이 되고 난 이후에 어, 배우와 이야기하는 중에 이 인물이 조금 더 변화하는 그러니까 애초에 초반에는 조금 어, 어리버리하고 좀 이렇게 그런 사람이었다가 권력의 맛을 알아가면서 이 사람이 점점 변해가는 그런 식으로 약간의 어, 수정이 for the most part, um, it, we stuck to the script in terms of how the story moves forward. But one change that I would say happened was after we cast the main character of Young Tak, um, the actor Pyong Hong Lee, the character became a little more, um, he had a lot more change. And when we had originally written the script, he was just more of a straightforward villain, but after we cast him, there we see a lot more change in him throughout the film. We see a lot more of the power that he has and how that changes him as a person. 그렇지만 이제 많은 수정을 할수 있는 상황은 아니었기 때문에 어 이렇게 짧은 씬들 몇 개를 추가해서 어이 인물의 변화를 이렇게 다른 씬들은 이제 연기를 그런 식으로 바꿔서 하면 됐었지만 이 인물의 어떤 변화를 보여주는 씬들이 필요했기 때문에. 씬을 추가한 게 있는데 그 재난 장면이 막 중간에 플래시백으로 나오잖아요. 그 민성이 그 뒤에 영탁이 가만히 서서 그 폐허가 된 풍경을 바라보는 장면 그 씬이 있는데 그 씬이 추가된 씬이고 거기서 어 이제 찍기 전에는 아 uh, so we were able to change it as just because of the nature of the shoot, but we we could um, alter you know, talk to the actor about performance, and there were a couple of short scenes that were added as we were filming. And one of the scenes that were added was a scene after when everything has just gone downhill and Young Tak standing behind, and he's just watching the disaster unfold in front of him, and he has that flashback. That was a short scene that was added during production as well. There were concerns as if this short scene was enough to actually make a difference and portray that change in the character, but on set, watching the actor Pyeon Lee's performance on the monitor, those concerns immediately went away. All right, uh, another question right here in front of me.